Welcome to HP Tuner's GM Gen 5 training, part 14. In this training module, we're going to be exploring how we can tune and work with our high pressure pump control. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our high pressure pump control and tuning in our GM Gen 5 applications. Now, the last tutorial, we focused on the low pressure pump control, and that's really the first portion or the other first half of our direct injection system. So the low pressure pump feeds the high pressure pump. So we're gonna break down how this relationship works um, and then talking about the tables that we need to go and work with and program for the high pressure pump control. And then also taking a look at what we need to modify if we started to change out some components within the high pressure pump. So changing out the pump itself, going from an LT1 to an LT4 pump, what do we change? Or if we're putting in an aftermarket camshaft that has an overdrive lobe that's going to have more swept volume or displacement on that cam profile that drives the high pressure pump, what do we change in order for the engine control module to recognize that so that everything's gonna fall in line when that new camshaft is driving our high pressure pump? So there's some things to discuss there. Then we're gonna take a look at some cause and effect in the data logs from our VCM scanner, just understanding what's going on when we're commanding and programming some of the table values and trying to change our target pressures and looking at the performance of what's going on. It's actually a really straightforward topic here, but there's definitely some basics that we need to get out of the way. Let's talk about those basics here in the beginning, and then we'll move into taking a look at the specific tables for programming and working with our high pressure pump control. Now, the last tutorial, again, we focused on low pressure pump control. So the fuel pump control module drives the low pressure pump. We have a fuel pressure sensor mounted on that low pressure line that's constantly reporting back what the pressure is built in that low pressure system. The fuel pump control module monitors that specific fuel pressure that's coming from the sensor and then it takes a look at what the desired target pressure set we have a couple different flow modes we have low flow high flow normal flow hot flow hot fuel flow so there's a couple different modes that we can vary the pressure in for all kinds of different reasons but either way whatever the desired target pressure whatever flow mode that we're commanding the fuel pump control module to operate in the fuel pump control module is sending a zero to 100% duty cycle control to the low side pump mount in the tank, which is the lifter pump, and it's gonna be speeding up or slowing down that fuel pump to generate more fuel flow and more pressure in order to hit that desired target. Now that pressure is operating relatively low in comparison to the high pressure pump here that's mounted on the engine that's driven mechanically and that's controlled electronically through a servo motor. What we're going to find is that we have a typical range of pressure anywhere from 43 to about 75 PSI commanded on our low pressure pump control. When we're talking about our high pressure pump, that low pressure pump's feeding that fuel flow and that pressure into the high side pump. The high side pump's acting as a multiplier. And what we're going to find is it goes from that 43 to 75 PSI range on the low side coming into the pump. On the outlet of the pump, it can reach up to 3,000 PSI. So 500 to 3,000 PSI is a dynamic range that we're gonna find ourselves operating in with our high pressure pump. So it's a very large range of adjustment. Now the pump itself is mounted to the engine and we'll find it's driven with a plunger assembly and it's driven off the camshaft lobe. And there's a special, uh, almost a concentric style lobe ground into the camshaft. And as the cam spins in the engine, that's driving the plunger assembly up and down and generating pressure within the high side pressure pump itself. Now, that's only part of what's going on with a high pressure pump. There's going to be a servo motor inside that's controlled electronically from the engine control module. We'll find as we're starting to operate and we need more pressure on the high side of things, we have a fuel pressure sensor that's mounted on the fuel rails. The fuel rails are what feeds the fuel to the fuel injectors mounted into the combustion chambers. The fuel pressure is sent back to the engine control module. We have a desired target pressure that we want to run, or what's known as the rail pressure. We compare the actual pressure to the rail pressure. We figure out that difference of how far they're off, and we start to command a control to that servo motor to act as a means to control the high pressure pump. So as the high pressure pump is operating, the actuator, the plunger assembly is going up and down and generating some amount of pressure. Then we have the servo motor control. That's a zero to 100% duty cycle output from the engine control module. 
that is going to be constantly changed. The output, the amperage and voltage control to the high pressure pump, that's going to be constantly changed to allow more or less pressure to be built inside of our high pressure pump. So when we're monitoring the pressure in the rail with a fuel pressure sensor, we're going to be reporting that back to the end control module. Whatever that pressure is going to be and whatever the desired rail pressure is programmed in our tables here under fuel system we're going to talk about, we're going to find there's a difference there and we send more or less voltage and amperage to our high pressure pump to speed up or slow down that pressure uh, building in order to reach that target. The system is dynamic, meaning we control a wide range of pressures. We move that pressure pretty frequently as we're driving around. So idle, part throttle, um, let's say 20% throttle, 40% throttle, 100% throttle, they'll all have different pressure targets that we want to reach. So we're always actuating and changing the control to the high pressure pump in real time. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.